Hello, welcome to Quark Talk. I'm Crystal here on ThinkTech. Now, always trying to push boundaries in terms of topics. And when it comes to racism, well, oh, we have a lot to push, don't we? Now, basing our concept of racism in the US, everything of this um, problematic history is based on the foundation of anti-Blackness, right? You know, we created this, this, this concept of, of race, this construct in order to maintain white power, to put it in a broad nutshell, if you will. But well, how do we extend this conversation on a global level? So for example, in Asia, where there is still, I think, a, quite a prominent anti-Black racism going on in Asian countries, how do we look at that? And so today we're gonna to be extending the conversation beyond the US into places like Hong Kong specifically, because I lived there for many years and I found this lovely, lovely guest who has been in Hong Kong for a long time, who can talk to us about anti-Blackness in Asia. So um, without further ado, let me welcome my wonderful guest, Thelma, Thelma Patmore, who is a UK Jamaican, uh, previously a, an architect, who is now, interestingly enough, a life and business strategy coach, a certified hand and fingerprint analyst, a meditation teacher, and overall just wonderful human being trying to help people recognizing their full potential. So Thelma, welcome to Think Tech. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you, I appreciate it because I know it's early for you in Hong Kong and we're here in the US and we're speaking like we're next to each other, which is a wonderful thing about um, technology. Oh, so <laughs> let's have that bridge these gaps and let's talk a little bit because, you know, when I met you through this uh, program at the Africa Center in Hong Kong, it was a space to allow for these kind of critical conversations around anti-Blackness, uh, particularly in, in Hong Kong and Chinese cultures. So can we just start with maybe um, how you were brought up, and um, you went to Hong Kong from the UK in the early 90s, but just give us a little context of how you were brought up, um, how did you feel about being a Black woman specifically um, in where you grew up, and then how that felt when you first moved to Asia back then? Well, I um, moved to Hong Kong because at the time in the UK, it was a recession. And so as an architect, I mean, it was either I made sandwiches or I went on the dole, which was called, which is, you know, benefits, which I didn't, you know, I wasn't brought up like that. My father um, always said, find something to do, do it well, that people will pay you coming from the immigrant mentality. And so I realized that Hong Kong was still part of the British empire. Right. as it was, you know, the colony. And so somebody said, why don't you try honkers? He actually said, why don't you try the filth? Filled in London, try honkers. That was what it was wow. called. Wow. Which is, so I mean, I, so I had a friend who I'd been meditating with for many years. We started meditating early eighties together and he was yeah. Australian and said, why don't you try Hong Kong? We, um, there's lots of work here. And um, so I, I came and, and there um, was right early nineties. There was, was a in time. fact, I was so shocked because there I had three job interviews in the first week. <laughs> it was just, and it wasn't like interviews. It was like, oh, when can you start? Um, whereas in the UK, it was more you go for the interview, a second interview, and maybe you'd start maybe in three weeks. But in the UK, interestingly, if I spoke to somebody on the phone, I would get the job. But then when I got there, they would say, sorry, the job is gone, which, you know, is sort of normal. You know, you get used to that. I mean, it's hurtful, but you get used to it. So um, when you say you get used to it, is it because um, you were brought up like your parents would just tell you, like, this is just the way life is? How it being is. A person, yeah. or just That's how it is. Yeah. And also mm -hmm. there was only three um, black people in the school that I went to um, and at the time, I mean, obviously my, my siblings joined, you know, later, but when I, um, I, I mean, I, I felt I had to sort of do well. I did well in sports, which was, my mum didn't like that, that they were pushing me to do sports because she felt, actually they were training me for the Olympics, but she didn't feel that she wanted me to do that because she felt that if I got injured and I didn't have an education, then what would I do? Yeah. So, you know, 
richest it's person. It's interesting. That's kind of like the immigrant mentality as well, yes. right? I mean, I'm coming from the Chinese side saying, okay, well, what family doesn't tell their kids to like all, it's all about schooling. It's all about succeeding Absolutely. in all the professions. Absolutely. And I was actually told by one of my, um, the careers, well, she was like this, this deputy headmistress. And she used to say things like, uh, uh, you know, she'd call me in and say, you're wearing tan tights. I'd say, or I would wear black tights. And she'd say, um, you're not wearing the right color. And I said, well, what color do you call me? And she said, well, you're black. And I said, the right tights are black. And she said, no, you have to wear tan colored tights, which as you can imagine, was just, it was just wrong. Anyway, so that particular woman, eventually when I went, when I became an architect, I went back to her, back uh -huh. to the school. Yeah. And um, she just couldn't believe it because she was encouraging me to be a manager in Woolworths, which was around at the time okay. and, 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 and this kind of thing, because there was also this, this um, underlying, um, you know, blacks don't do well right. going on. But actually, in retrospect, it actually helped me because it made me push yeah. through that, yeah. they, that this woman was wrong. Right. right but but so. that that's kind of um depends on your personality some people use that yes. to resist that somebody trying to bring you down but some people Absolutely. kind of get sucked into that type of insecurity and, and manifest in different ways through violence or through overcompensation you know there's a lot of that stuff too so yes. okay so then you um as a proud um woman you know confident woman you you come to hong kong and again you know just to paint the picture for people in the early 90s as i was there as well um it was a vibrant beautiful time right oh, hong so kong was vibrant. Right, golden era everything was just amazing oh, oh my so, goodness oh my right goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah lots to say about that but so but did that impact you know um was was it welcoming because it was such a thriving economy why was why were you so re well received there and what was your first um incidents of like anti-black racism that you felt when you got there well i um it was interesting people then people used to stare a lot then not so much now people used to stare a lot i uh, i had a friend who asked me to come into his office just to see him and um and i had my portfolio in those days you had big portfolios you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> a, a1 walking around and so i had it with me and um i i went in to see him and he said oh my boss would like to talk to you and i said okay um and then your so boss had, is chinese uh, male? No, his boss his boss because i was his just boss. i just arrived you know i was sort okay, of okay. In, going around interviewing every now and again you know okay. um and then he, uh so his boss um sat me down and started having a chat and I was looking around the office and looking around his space and I started to more or less interview him really um <laughs> sort of you know these projects how long have you been on them um how, did you finish on time was it coming in on budget and um and then after about I don't know about maybe 20 25 minutes he asked me if I wanted a job and I was like oh why how can you just ask me that and you haven't looked at my my um Your my work video. right yeah he said no no no. he goes i've heard enough and so oh. basically he said then he offered me a salary okay and i wasn't quite sure whether that was good or bad anyway i took took it okay okay and he said well you know it's best if we hire you because i don't think anybody else would many companies here would hire a person of like yeah. you basically what, and then so he, he mentioned a particular firm uh -huh. i won't say which one it was okay but eventually i ended up working with that firm and it was through that firm that i ended up moving to shanghai <laughs> so right. so basically what he I, I you know i suppose in okay. a way it was a backhanded compliment sort of oh well you know um will take you and it was actually to work on the hong kong football club and the, okay. and the, and the jockey club the new jockey right. club in happy valley okay uh, they were extending two tracks you know two extra tracks for the horses okay, at that time. okay. so okay. but basically what i realized was that um he was trying because he himself was a, a um an, an englishman 
who had been oh, there. Oh, okay. Years. All right. So that made a difference. That's interesting. So it made a difference, but he, but that racism, which I got from the UK was facing me right there because he as a white man or a Caucasian, I should say, was saying, oh, you know, you probably wouldn't do very well here. But wow. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but it was yeah, fine. No. I took it on the chin and um, worked there. And apparently he went back and told um, the team that I was about to join, oh my gosh, I've just been interviewed for the first time in 27 years. Meaning, you know, so basically what he was saying is that we'd love to have you, um, but his way of trying to make sure I didn't go anywhere else was to say, well, you know, nobody, you know, else, will. nobody else will hire you, which was yeah, not true. Yeah. But, right. but he's making it so that you should be grateful for his opening exactly. up and, and not because you were especially qualified for the job, but because he yeah. was doing you a favor. So, yeah. you you know, there's a lot of that type of, I don't know what it's called, but you know, where you you can twist things around to make it seem like it is to your service. And yet yes. it's actually, um, you know, underpinning your, your, your qualifications or whatever. So yes. I, that's why racism is a very insidious thing. Um, very you don't insidious. see it sometimes they can look at you and they can make it sound like it's all for you, but it can be turned around the other way. But Absolutely. if going back to Asian culture, like Chinese specifically, I feel like historically there's been a rich converse, um, relationship between China and Africa, for example, um, you know, the trades, um, centuries ago and there was not that sense of racism that you see in the last century and i'm wondering what your thoughts are on how that kind of came to be um your experience i know you uh, maybe you can share that experience of just having some people just don't have that you know th that wider mindset and, or maybe just an odd curiosity but from a very limited perspective to 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 assume the negative things that they hear from their family or whatever you know where does it come from well that, yeah. i i don't know where it comes from i think um actually over the years i've spoken to some people um chinese people i have um, a, a wide variety of friends here um, and, and actually, I could say my the best friends are um, Chinese girlfriends. You know, I have really, really good Chinese girlfriends. Um, yeah. I remember one time being on going on the MTR, the on, you know the subway, the here, subway. Mm -hmm. to the office. Yeah, and um, I was sat in front of. It wasn't that busy actually, but I was sat in front of a man and his young son who was about five years of age, and. Um, he was saying to him, oh, don't look at her. She'll eat you. And you now, understood this because it was he speaking in Chinese. He spoke it. He was saying it in English. Said, don't, yeah, she'll eat you. She'll eat you like this. And I, and I just looked, I sort of knelt forward, you know, because we were sitting kind of opposite each other. And I said to the little boy, it's not true. Black people don't eat, eat people. And wow. he got, and then they got off at the next stop. But the thing is, I was like, wow. Yeah. And then everybody else in the carriage was saying, they, they, oh, no, no, that's not true. We don't think that, um, you know, it, oh, obviously really? they came out feel better. But right. it was just like, wow. But I knew I had to nip it in the bud for that boy because he's about yeah. five years of age. Yeah. And yeah. that's exactly what it is. You know, right. I used to hear things when I was younger about how Chinese people chopped people, right? You know, really? So you were fit you know, these kind of myths as well yeah. from another so, side? Because you know, I, I, I understand where it's coming from. It's coming from our elders. I mean, this is where we get our, um, uh, yeah. most of our actually prejudices as well. I mean, yeah. I used to, you know, I had relatives that would, they would honestly berate me if I actually, um, when they saw me walking with, um, one of my friends, you know, my, 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 my school friends or whatever. And I, oh, you're not dating this person, are you? And I'd say, well, if I was, why, why would it matter? Yeah. And then I would get the whole, so I know it's everywhere. It's That's everywhere. true. Exactly. Everywhere. Every community has that kind of, That's that, right. that inner gossipy attitudes against each other. And, That's and you right. can't say anything right now, but you know, it is, it does stem from very deeply rooted places, but let me ask you something more personal then. Um, had, have you ever dated a, a Chinese guy and, did that not to <laughs> pry too into your private life, but uh, well, know. um, um, all, uh, uh, Chinese guys have approached me, but they will say things like, um, I don't know how serious we can be because my family would accept you, right? Okay, well, that's being honest. This, was, this yeah. was in the early days, I mean, I haven't 
um, this hasn't really um, um, okay. it's happened. not on the top of your list right now to go no. out and <laughs> down an Asian boy. But you know, back I to mean, the Africa, you know, I yeah. remember this one um, lady. I forget which country she's from in Africa, um, but she said that she has a hard time dating in Hong Kong because yes. the a you know the African men are going to. Um, go for the African women who were there that maybe they, they end up with or, but when it comes to Asian men, she knows that the, the, the Chinese are going to be like, well, no, I don't date unless I'm just going to have you as a girlfriend or a mistress. And I just, that's a right. Friend. That's it. There you go. There you go. The exotic I'll other. I'll tell you what's very interesting, which, <laughs> well, it's not interesting. I mean, it's a bit cheeky, but um, I found while I was in, <laughs> in Shanghai, yeah. A lot of the taxi drivers used to tell me, because I speak Mandarin, okay, so they used to tell me um, how much they, how exotic they thought I was and I would I be their girlfriend? And I'd say, oh, wow. The funny thing is, I was always kind of a little bit, they were always a little bit um, annoying. So I'd <laughs> get into a taxi and I wouldn't have my, my nice face on. It would be, okay. you know, because they're always trying to take you the wrong way. And by the time, yeah. and this happened many times, okay. by the time I'd got to my destination, they'd say, would you be my girlfriend? Wow. Or, but I'd not say, in a good way. You're saying that it's out of like a, a curiosity way. Like they want to try the exotic sure. other, like this little exotic. I think so. Yes. And I would say from the moment I got into this capital now, what made you think yeah. that I even like you? You didn't even know. Yeah. You know. Because it was, oh. I don't know, I think it was curiosity. And it happened when some friends of mine came from Hong Kong and we yeah. were in a cab and we were dropping everybody off and he kept saying, I'll drop you off last. And my friend was laughing and saying, oh my God, yeah, I know okay. I understand. Yes, well, okay, let's go there. Um, I, I think, you know, like in the States, you talk about the hypersexuality of, yeah. of people of color and Asians, right? You know, you yes. have all that that's built um, on, upon these narratives again, yes. um, that are trying to control things. But, um, I think that's the same thing we can apply to China in your cases. I mean, it wasn't just trying to be nice. Like you say, trying to say, okay, will you be my friend? Like my, my, my token black friend, it wasn't that innocent. They no. wanted a piece of you thinking that, that whatever they thought in the back of their head. Because I don't know where they from. get this, uh, they got this idea that it was, so, and then taxi drivers in Hong Kong are all, always, and I'm not joking. They would always tell me about their extramarital affairs. Oh, I have so many. I have a. I said, do you have? A, you're, you're married, yes. Oh, I have a, a wife in um in Shenzhen or in. China. And I'd say, I, I think I know. But why do you tell me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they don't <laughs> tell me that <laughs> when I'm in a taxi. Why are you telling me? You know, like I don't yeah, exactly. or to it's say, very revealing. or to sort of it's like you know, like they say that the cock, you know, the um, you know showing off about his virility or whatever it yeah. was like he can still Happened yeah no wow see so that's Very what um it's not just being black in asia it's being a black woman in asia that yes. you are revealing to us right now that yes. that is a, it complicates um your position and your power or lack thereof or i don't know it's, it's a really interesting thing um that you have to work with and exactly Right. But I do nip it in the bud, though. I mean, I, you know, so I mean, I would tell That's them right. off and say, you know, you should. And I've been even sitting on a, a tram, you know, being touched, you know, somebody touching. Yeah. Oh, you've been harassed on the tram? Oh, my goodness. So this is in the early days. I looked, you know, sort of longer hair and, you know, the whatever. You're you just know, too but, damn attractive and like people want to. Well, touch you. I don't know but what no, it was. Not but right. It's, not right. Yeah. But it's, um, yeah, it happens a lot. And on the MTR, you know, on the busy times, I never get the MTR on the busy time. Because, you know, if you have shopping in your hands, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. it's happened to me where somebody's arm has come under and then cupped wow. my, my, um, wow. my breast. And so I, what I did, I um, waited until, and I screamed at him. Um, I put my bags down on the thing, went back in, and I screamed at him, ham sap low, ham sap low. Oh. And everybody, yeah. and, and people were pretending they couldn't see it, but he knew. He didn't say anything. He knew. He was just, you know, copping a, a long feel because I had my bags in my hand, you know, yeah. and I couldn't do anything. And then I just wow. just pushed him, pushed him, and said, and just, you know, like this. And um, so I never travel. Yeah, it happens a lot, and I hear it from a lot of 
local girls tell me that too that it happens to them right too. so this is where it kind of like yeah. reinforces the harsh reality of the sexualization of women and how we could never really get away from that you know yeah, we that. can't just blame uh, a certain place it, i mean it's everywhere right you know of course hong kong and, and china are a, a much more patriarchal society but you look at the sexual abuse um in, in the states you know it, it's just it, it's all over the place so everywhere but I just, but I, I, I try to, because I know if I was to try and, you know, report it, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's time, but I just nip it in the bud and let them yeah. know. Right. Yeah. You might, you know, you've done this, but I'm letting you know it's bad. I mean, obviously right. they do it all the time. Um, and and get away with it. And get away with it. Exactly. They get away with it. Do you think it's gotten worse in a sense that, I mean, so the, the normative of seeing people of different backgrounds is probably... Uh, more accepting in that sense but at the same time I feel like because of social media and whatever altered twisted news wherever we're getting it from you yeah. can reinforce certain types of um, perspectives that yes absolutely right so um, do you blame it on social media do you feel like things um, are going the wrong way I think it's social media definitely yeah. social media um, people just have an assumption um, obviously when I was in China I, I felt that um, it was out of curiosity. I remember obviously people touching your hair and all this kind of yeah. stuff. And, um, uh, and then you'd get many people would just come straight up and ask, are you from Africa? You know, you know, fake, yeah. you know, they yeah. ask you. The, the and dumb I would question. say, no, I'd say, yeah, major, yeah. you know, Jamaica, which is, yeah, major. Yeah. And they go, oh, and then I'd have to say, oh, you know, Bolt, you saying Bolt. This is where you know the 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 the, the famous. And then they go, oh, I know. And they go, oh, yeah. And then they do the sign, you know. But it's uh, it's. I mean, it's, um, it, it, does it, it does it bother you because you know on one hand it's kind of like an innocent curiosity to some level, but then but it gets China, so. Hard. I felt it was more of an innocent um, curiosity because yeah. seriously, as a you know, I used to walk around on site as an architect, and of course, I used to stop work, and I used to say, ah. Oh, well, come on, stop looking at me. Don't look at me. Carry on working, you know, yeah, because exactly. it's dangerous. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> I used to say to the foreman, just warn them when I'm coming, just but just to carry on working. It is curiosity. It really well, is. Well, okay, let me ask you this, Thelma. Do you think it's inevitable for any homogenous society to have racism? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, 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 it's everywhere. It's endemic. Okay. And I really don't, you know, I, I'd like to be part of a conversation where we could um, find out how we could um, um, alleviate it. It's never yeah. really going to go. It's but not, in, not, in my, not in my lifetime anyway, until, you know, until everybody is, is, is mixed. But there's always this um, thing of keeping it pure. One of my, my cousins was like, oh, no, 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 you can even... I was so sure you can date them but don't don't marry them we have to keep it pure i said what are you talking about we have mixed race aunts and uncles what are you talking exactly about? everyone's mixed <laughs> so, yeah so um it's even so the it, founding fathers of this stupid country is mixed of mixed you know all, all the kids exactly. are all mixed, so, so yeah. um it's it's it really it's about tolerance and acceptance um you know i really feel it's tolerance and why am i here it's not because you know i'm not i don't find that um i mean to be honest back in the uk same thing it was almost not it was like normal you just lived with it but here where um to me it's kind of obvious it's up to me i feel that my reaction to it it's how it informs my life yeah and then some people will go oh i you know they say, oh you've changed my mind about black people or Oh, I didn't really like, you know, this kind of thing. I said, well, look, it's not about black people. It's about people. There is bad in every race, every culture. It's good and bad. So it's not, it's just about, you know, I have to try to be um, an example. I feel that yeah. should be an example. So, so you feel there's kind of um, a responsibility almost? A responsibility, yeah. A burden and, of, and, yeah. Yes and integrity and also treating others how I would like to be treated. I kind of mother my friends anyway, but it's, it's, it's treating people how I would like to be treated. And then if people are like that, you just, you just, 
back away if the person is because they say hurt people hurt people so yeah. you know yeah. somebody may have had a really bad experience yeah. with a, right. a person right. of color so right. I, I i don't really feel that um it can be done you can only do a, a small piece yes we can talk about it i had so you know talking about black lives matter all lives matter and it shouldn't this thing shouldn't be going on you know and right it should be happening within the yeah. communities that um to also to educate the young people as well yes okay. well um, i mean that's why going back to the africa center it's great because then you get like local students who go in and they have absolutely you know communicating and seeing it as a normative and really embracing the culture and not just seeing it as a kind of a, a you know a, through some fancy cultural activity day where you get yeah. to like see all exactly. like you know the plumes and, and old costumes which is stupid because that's yeah. a reduced culture right so yes. but what you know in our couple of minutes short time left i just wanted to end you know it bothered me and i'm grateful that you shared it but the sexualization aspect that we don't talk enough about because it's that's easy to say right. you know we want to get rid of racism but the sexual thing on top of it is really really problematic so um what would you have to say leave our audience um thinking about to push the boundaries of seeing that these complex weavings of race and body and sex and culture are all so intertwined that um you know give us give us something to think about before we leave well i i i personally um never dress in a way because of that mm. that would encourage it and it's mm. not because I, um, I'm not a prude or anything by any way, but it's having self-respect. So I feel that if I portray myself in a way, which is, um, you know, as we decent or whatever, then, um, cause it, it's made me think, oh my gosh, maybe I need to dress in a particular way or make sure I cover up or whatever. Do you see what I mean? But it's, it's. I feel really that it's a lot of social media and the um, the perception of who black people are and what they do and what they're about. Um, and I try to, when I, I see people, I speak to people to educate them and sort of say, well, no, there are young people who have been led astray by drugs, whatever it is, um, yeah. or feeling insecure or actually abuse. I mean, yeah. I don't, let's not even, let's not pretend that this just doesn't happen. I spoke yeah. to, I spoke to a lot of young people when I had this incident who, mm. who told me about their own young Chinese girls and say, it happens to us all the time. I said, what do you mean? Right. Yes, we'd always, it happened to us, but we can't say anything. Yeah, it's or, the stigma, the, of, the shame, the shame stigma. of the, 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 you know, the so shame. The shame. Of the, yeah, so I think so that's, I, that, yeah. Okay. I feel that every, if it happens to you, speak to somebody about it. Yeah. um not necessarily yeah. friends but really yeah. seek help because it can yeah. cloud your judgment yeah. and, and don't blame and actually, yourself for anything exactly you know, that, that's and feeling crazy. guilty yeah and yeah. feeling guilty um and yeah. thinking i mean you know this this, yeah. this is, happens a lot that's a whole other thing and that feel makes me feel like i need to like do another episode with you to talk about that part of yeah, the shame the shame and yeah, Thelma, I'm, unfortunately we're running out of time, but it, it's interesting that we started off and my intention was to break out and talk about anti-blackness in Asia, but then it spun into like the whole problematic area of the sexualized female body, which yes. goes to show that it's so connected and so entangled. And so we really need to kind of embrace these um, problematic topics together. So I really Absolutely. appreciate you sharing your experience and to just open up that conversation to remember your um, what happened to you and how people can apply that to their lives and to respect each other as people as human beings. So thank yeah. you so much for sharing today. And I hope that we thank can uh, continue to me. break these um, divides by talking more about this. So thank you, Thelma. That thank was you. Thelma Patmore. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn.
check out our website, thinkteckhawaii.com. Mahalo.